What's up, everybody? Welcome back to this week's Stretch Escape video. Um, before we start, I'm challenging myself to film and edit a video concurrently today. So it might be a little later in the day that it drops on Friday. Anyways, today's video is about maintaining one of my slices of nature. And you know my channel is all about having small slices of nature in your home and around. Um, the project we're going to be working on is the pitcher plant terrarium, which is probably my channel's favorite build at this point. And yeah, it's, it is absolutely astonishing with how much growth has happened and I can't wait to show it off to all you guys. We got a lot of work to do. It's pretty messy because you know how organic material could be. And if you don't, you'll find out in a couple minutes. To start, I have a list. So let me just go through the list with you guys really quick. It's pretty straightforward today. We're doing, we're gonna clean the glass. We might have to use some vinegar because the hard water might not come off. I have to trim the hydrocodyl Japan because it's absolutely all over the place. It's not just on the back wall anymore. And I need to, trim the dead pitchers off of our pitcher plant and there's a specific particular way we have to do this so we'll explain that when that time comes and i have a lot of overgrowth that i need to i'd say deal with because if you leave overgrowth the base of the plant part of the plant that's uh planted in the soil etc etc it'll end up dying off because it's gonna lack light necessary for photosynthesis and yeah, I'm gonna pretty much give you an update throughout the whole entire process because last update was cool, right? This update is like, you have a finished, established terrarium and I want you guys all to know what that is. Otherwise, there's not much more to do, but get into it. Thank you for watching today's video. Drop a like, comment, subscribe. I want to talk to you guys, meet new new people, and uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, everyone, we're back. It's been like three-ish hours. We just got done trimming everything, cleaning everything up. Um, I ate lunch. And now I'm here to talk to you guys about how we're gonna get into this. So I said before that we're gonna start by cleaning the glass. I said we might need to use some vinegar, but that wasn't necessarily the case. All the little mold spores came off right away. They weren't that strong. Thank you, Springtails. And yeah, most of it wiped off pretty easily. As you can see, I use a microfiber cloth because paper towels leave all that paper residue. and I'm not the biggest fan. Immediately after, I cleaned most of like... The water stains off of the glass and the dirt. I took my aquarium scraper and I scraped the algae bits that are closer to the plants and the soil and the wall in the back. I scraped that all away so it's nice and pretty for everybody. After scraping the glass and such, I wanted to start by trimming our Nepenthes first. I had a perfect two pitchers that were messed up. But as you can see, this deformed pitcher that's dying off, it's ready to go. You're not supposed to cut it at the base of the pitcher. You cut it mainly at the top of the stem by the leaf. This way you don't have any excess die off, rot, etc. You don't want to harm your plant. And this second example right here, this entire leaf was dead. And this pitcher was at the plant store when I got it, so it's ready to go. When the entire leaf dies, you need to cut it from the base of the rhizome. So this is what I'm doing right here. We are cutting that, disposing of our trimmings properly. Boop. And yeah, now that the pitcher plant is all trimmed up, 
let's get into trimming our hydrocolor japan because you can see it's absolutely everywhere it's all over the hey max it's all over the tank it's at the bottom now it's on the sides it's growing on the glass i didn't even know that was possible but it is growing on the glass i went with like a weeding tactic and i was pulling a lot of it out i almost pulled some of the back wall off and i didn't want to do that so i took my time it wasn't that hard i had to use the scissors to clip some pieces out you guys will probably see me hitting my hands on the rack because I had maybe three inches of room above the tank to use my long tweezers and long scissors. There was so much hydrocolor Japan. And the, the hydrocolor Japan was the only plant that had like yellowing or browning leaves. And I'm assuming that's because they were growing like away from the humid, humid areas and getting a little too much light. When you have, uh, with the Hydrocotyl Japan specifically, that amount of overgrowth, if you just leave it untamed, which is an option, like terrariums, you could just let them go, you know, and uh, watch the life cycle and see all the decomposition and see the plants die and regrow, almost like a forest floor or somewhere out in nature. That's always fun to watch, but if you want something on display around your house, you're definitely going to want to keep maintenance on it. You definitely want to trim all the excess. You're going to want to clean it up, replant, do what you need to do. This way you can enjoy it for a longer period of time. I definitely don't want to redo this anytime soon because I feel like it just started growing. After I trimmed pretty much everything that I was going to trim. I just get a little extra wipe on the glass so it's nice and clean. Got rid of a bunch of the excess trimmings and threw them in the little trash can that we got going, which I absolutely love. I'm so happy I found that. And yeah, that's it. You're trimming plants. You don't want to trim the healthy plants. You want to trim the plants that need to go. So it's pretty straightforward. After trimming the plants, we doused the tank. I gave it a very hefty spray because I didn't spray it in two weeks. It's been a while. When you spray uh, carnivorous plants, when you water carnivorous plants, like the UG at the bottom is also a carnivorous plant, you need to use distilled water. The distilled water has no nutrients or minerals in it, so it won't affect the growth of carnivorous plant. If anyone doesn't know why carnivorous plants are carnivorous, it is because in nature they grow in environments that don't necessarily have the amount of nutrients needed to grow from the roots. So they adapted and evolved a way to hunt, hunt insects. You'll find these pitchers growing in the canopies of rainforest you'll find other pitcher plants like north american pitcher plants saracenia species just growing out in fields and bog environments you'll find heliamphora which is called a sun pitcher you'll find those kind of plants typically i'm pretty sure it's mount tepui don't uh, you could correct me if i'm wrong I, if i'm wrong i don't care um but it's just the highland area and there's a lot of rocks and stuff so not much soil for any plant to grow out of. Here, I trimmed one piece of my Hygrophila arcuata and I replanted it. And when I finished planting it, I did this. Look, look at it, look at the tragedy. I stabbed one of my healthy pictures. I was so mad. I was so, so mad. Look at me. So mad. And because all the uh, digestive fluid that the pitcher plants create was draining, I clipped it and I ended up throwing it out. It got all over my hands too. And pitcher plant digestive fluid is yellow. And just like that, I am finished. I am finished with 
all the plants. I'm finished with the pitcher plants. I'm finished with cleaning the glass, scraping the glass. And now I'm cleaning the lid because the lid accumulated a ton of dust and hardware buildup. So I just gave it a super good scrub with a microfiber cloth and a paper towel, water. And it was clean. That's all. I hope everyone enjoyed watching me maintain one of my slices of nature. I hope that it was visually appealing and satisfying to watch me struggle. And I hope you guys come back for the next video. I'm going to throw a bunch of b-roll in so you guys can see how it turned out. The giant red pitchers, the pitcher plant, all of the other plants like the bladderwort and the dwarf baby tears that's growing in the moss, it's growing in the sphagnum moss that the pitcher plant came in, as well as the bucephalandra that is so healthy in the cracks of the rock. Yeah, uh, I'm excited to do another project like this. It probably won't happen for a little bit because I have a bunch lined up for you guys. And just like that, we're done with today's video. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.